I'm Edwin Payne. This is Charles Rowland. We are the Dead Boy Detective Agency. Focusing on the lives of two dead boys named Charles Rowland and Edwin Payne, Dead Boy Detective's stories took us on a journey through dimensions as they helped ghosts solve mysteries. While this concept is fascinating as it is, things get more exciting as they share the same universe as The Sandman. Written by Neil Gaiman, The Sandman universe journeys through the mystical world of dreams. When paired together, Sandman and Dead Boy Detective complement each other quite well. We will explore their connection in great detail. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What are Dead Boy Detectives all about? Appearing in DC Comics' Vertigo imprint, the Dead Boy Detectives were the brainchild of Neil Gaiman, and they actually made their first appearance in Sandman Comics. We'll circle back to that later, but for now, let's have a look at this dynamic detective duo, who are considered to be the ghost version of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. As it turned out, these ghosts were actually two young children named Charles Rowland and Edwin Payne, who had been brutally murdered. After being sent to the afterlife, Charles and Edwin appeared in the Children's Crusade crossover, where it was revealed that they would often sneak into a school's library to learn how to be detectives. Over the course of their story arcs, they mastered this profession and took to investigating ghost mysteries, but this is a mere gist of their actual story arcs. Without further ado, let's now explore their origin story and peek into their connection to the Sandman universe. Shared Origins, From the Dreaming to the Waking World The Dead Boy Detectives first appeared in the second volume of Sandman Comics in 1991, in an issue titled Seasons of Mist Chapter 4. The comic jumps directly to the point and kicks off with an introduction to Charles Rowland, a 13-year-old boy living among ghosts. We learn that Charles has no option but to stay at St. Hilarin's school over the vacation in the aftermath of his father's imprisonment by the Iraqi army, while his parent was in in a life-or-death situation, Charles' school administration came through, and the headmaster, as well as Miss Gribble, volunteered to stay back and look after him. Ever since Charles had first arrived at the Institute a couple of years ago, he had constantly expressed his desire to go back home, and the comic panel shows him drafting a message to his father in the school library, asking him about the same. Soon enough, Miss Gribble finds him reading a mystery novel around his bedtime, and she sends him off to his dormitory to sleep. While Charles is the only student staying back in the dorms, he can sense the ghosts of every single boy who lived there, and the comic takes an eerie turn as he explores things further. The next morning, Charles realized that he was all alone at school, so he took this opportunity to sneak into the headmaster's office after a quick meal. While he was only trying to lurk around, Charles was not prepared for the shock that he received when he walked into the office to find his dead mother with the headmaster. His mother revealed that she had only recently died, and she returned to him from hell. While Charles had sensed ghosts before, he was taken aback by his mother's behavior, and he soon left the office to find Miss Gribble, who was preoccupied with something at the sanatorium. Soon enough, he realized that Miss Gribble was looking after two dead babies, and the visual shook him to his core and compelled him to run away again. While Charles was already quite terrified, things only worsened as three bullies named Barrow, Skinner, and, and Cheese Man woke him up mid-slumber. However, However, he was rescued by the spirit of an older headmaster who got rid of the bullies and declared that every single ghost in the school must study silently until he drafts a timetable for them. He maintains that they are all schoolboys who must receive education and even create a timetable to start actual classes. While things seem to be going smoothly for others, Charles has a hard time focusing in a class filled with ghosts, and he finds the conditions unsuitable for him. For instance, he ends up freezing in the swimming pool while the ghost students feel nothing, and he also has a hard time keeping up with his eating schedule as the other ghosts don't eat and leave him with no choice but to scurry around the school in search of some sustenance. Often he would wait until lights out and then sneak to the kitchen to eat some bread. During one of these times, the three bullies found him and revealed that they had tortured and murdered several students in the school so far. Soon enough, they were going to make Charles their next target, and they started torturing him by pressing his back against 
against a gas stove and using a fork to stab him. The intensity of the assault led him to lose consciousness, and the bullies abandoned him as he writhed in pain. While he was left all alone, Edwin Payne fortunately discovered him and dragged him back. Charles took a couple more days to recover, and he finally came back to consciousness on the third day. He soon revealed that he kept having dreams about blood-red worms crawling all over his body and even chewing them, causing him to run out in the snow. However, the nightmare didn't end there as the snow seemed to have turned into the skeleton of birds raining from the sky. To make things worse, the dream ended with the world littered with dead birds, whose skeletons were trying to move and fly around. While Charles narrated his dream and recovered from his attack, he was still in a fragile condition. He made acquaintances with Edwin, who revealed that the same bullies murdered him in this exact attic after they used occult text to perform ghastly rituals and sacrifice him. While this sounds disturbing enough, these bullies went one step further and even left his bones in a corner of the attic. Soon after Edwin confided in him, Charles succumbed to his wounds, and death made a striking appearance to claim his body. However, she was in a rush, and Charles was adamant about staying back with Edwin, who had died ages ago. With no option but to move on with her tasks for the day, death decided to leave Charles back with the promise that she would come back for him sometime in the future. As she takes her leave, Charles and Edwin strike up a wonderful friendship and decide to leave St. Hilarin's school to explore the world and embark on adventures together. They later appeared in a 2001 limited series titled Sandman Presents Dead Boy Detectives, where they looked into the mystery of several homeless children's corpses washing up on the shore of the Thames. Hi. Are Dead Boy Detectives connected to Netflix's Sandman universe? Considered to be one of the most iconic pieces that Neil Gaiman has ever penned, the Dead Boy Detectives' debut in a movie or series has been long overdue. While fans have been waiting for any news, all their patience has paid off, as Netflix is all set to release a series focusing on their adventures on April 25th, 2024. With Neil Gaiman on board, the show is set to have the perfect combination of wit and humor, and it's mostly going to follow the same premise as the comics. Of course, there will be several tweaks to adapt the story to a television medium, and we can expect new crimes and fresh investigations to be incorporated into the storyline. The show holds a lot of promise, and George Rextrew has been cast to play Edwin Payne, while Jaden Reverie will play Charles Rowland. While Dead Boy Detectives may have gained a lot of traction in the comics, it's an experimental step to release a television show based on their adventures, and we can only keep our fingers crossed for the show to do justice to its source material. Moreover, the show is set in the same universe as The Sandman, as confirmed by Neil Gaiman himself. While both these stories take place in different universes, they have a strong connection in the form of Death, played by Kirby Howell Baptiste. While Death has been quite a meaningful influence on Morpheus in The Sandman universe, it plays a role in the dead boy detective's life due to the afterlife element. Since this show revolves around the two teens' adventures after dying, we can keep our fingers crossed for Hal Baptiste to make a comeback as death itself chases Charles and make good on the promise to return for him one day. Edwin and Charles, best friends and their love lives. Now that the trailer for Dead Boy Detectives is finally out, we have some idea what the show might explore and just how many original elements it will incorporate. The three minute trailer has a whole lot to unpack, and these scenes take place while My Chemical Romance's Welcome to the Black Parade blasts in the background. As the trailer picks up pace, we learn that Edwin and Charles are running the Dead Boy Detective Agency while also keeping a low profile. As it turns out, they're trying to dodge death at every turn, especially because Edwin does not wish to be banished to hell after losing innumerable years of his life there. However, this proves to be a tricky task, as they find death lurking around every corner, while they also deal with challenging cases that never really seem to end. Edwin and Charles make for the perfect duo as they deal with these mysteries together, but at the same time, they seem to find some space for romance in their lives. The trailer has a couple of romance scenes where we can see Edwin share a moment with the cat king while Charles gets comfortable with a young woman named Crystal, who wanders into their lives while solving a case. 
Marvelous verdict. Dead Boy Detectives certainly holds a lot of promise, and the trailer has been more than enough to capture the audience's attention. Ranging from hardcore comic fans to those who have stumbled upon the Dead Boy Detectives through their association with the Sandman universe, everybody seems to be waiting for this show in anticipation. With Neil Gaiman on the front wheel, we're truly super hyped, as the release is just around the corner. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.